Shalom and welcome to our 21st annual Passover Feast of Unleavened Bread. This is part 14 of Preparing for Rulership. If there is another one full of the knowledge of Yahweh, produce him. There are all kind of leaders of the world. All over the earth. Leaders of nations. And the poor black man of America, he has millions of leaders. <laughs> But none of them demonstrate that they're full of the knowledge of Yahweh. Save myself. If there's another, produce him. Well, what about this man? And what about that man? Is he full of the knowledge of Yahweh? Or do they teach you some other gods? <laughs> This man is a great leader, but is he full of the knowledge of Yahweh? I said, Yahweh is the only true name of the God of Israel, and the God of Israel is the only God of the Bible. There's only one God of the Bible, and he is the God of Israel. So what's his name? Then Yahweh is the God of the Bible. So he's the God of the Word. The only Word of God is the Word of Yahweh. Now where is the man that's full of the knowledge of Yahweh that has the power to fill and cause the earth to become full of the knowledge of Yahweh? Here I stand. Is there another? Where is he? If there is not another, then my work prove I am the one. I am that great I am. I am the one already spoken of. I am that particular one. I am that unique one. I am that luminous one. I am the self-aluminous. One. I am the adroit one. I am the clever one. I am the elementary one. I am the unique one. I am the creator of Israel. I am the regenerator. I am the Messiah. I am the reformer. I am the son of Yahweh. I proclaim the name Yahweh. People all over America to say Yahweh. I'm calling the people in Africa to say Yahweh. I'm calling the people to say in the Caribbean Yahweh. I'm calling the people to say all over the earth Yahweh is God. Therefore, I am the one by my work. Because of my work, the Catholic Digest says the secret name of Yahweh. God's secret name. What does Yahweh mean? This 800 million Catholics are supposed to read this book. This is the Catholic Digest, a monthly magazine that comes out to Catholics. What does Yahweh mean? This is my word. This is printed in 1985, May, I believe. I've been teaching you seven years. A little over seven now. Because of my work, the Catholics come out and say, his name is the secret. And we've been keeping the knowledge of his name from you, the knowledge of his name. Now, we know we told you his name, but we're keeping the knowledge of his name. So now, because of my work, the Catholic Digest said, uh, we better catch our people up on Yahweh before Yahweh been Yahweh taken. 
Because if we don't tell him the truth, he'll be telling them all the truth, and we'll lose our parishes. So y'all would be, yeah, well, you're going to lose them to me anyway. Because if the Pope does not submit to me, he's going to lose his office. Because the people are going to submit to Yahweh. He's God. Yahweh is God. That's his name. And to prove it, 1987 is the Catholic calendar. St. Paul Catholic, 1987 Psalm calendar. Throughout every month, says things like, my help comes from Yahweh. Where does my help come from? My help comes from Yahweh. Huh? 1987 Catholic confessing Yahweh. It was a secret until I called the action. Since I'm the act, I call the reaction. I'm doing a mighty word. Look at my word. Hallelujah. So see, here is here are books being published saying you better get the knowledge of the secret. The world's best kept secret is the knowledge of Yahweh and his chosen people. They would never reveal this secret if I were not doing this work. They never did. Why are they revealing it from 85 through 87? Because I'm doing it. You see the name riding on these trucks? His name on these buildings, named all across America, Yahweh. You just, well, tell it, because I'm telling you. You better get with me, because the secret name of God, his true name, if that's his secret name, then what you've been calling is wrong. See, there's no need to call on a saint when God himself is present. when God himself is present. You don't need an intercessor. You don't have to confess so far to no man no more. God is present now. Yahweh himself is present now. You can get a call straight through to God. So now the Pope and the preachers, the evangelists, and the holy men, you don't need them anymore. You don't have to give your money to them anymore. When God is here, give it to him. That's why they don't want to tell you that I'm here, because they know they got to give up their power. See, Tammy and Jimmy Baker, they already gave it on us. They went on to confess their whores and, and drug addicts and all that, so they gave up PTL. Farwell and the rest of them just will give it up and tell the truth. Yahweh, then Yahweh is here. He is the Son of God. He deserves all your tithes and your offerings. Give it straight to God. I don't want to rob you no more in a false name of Jesus. I'm going to call him by his secret name, Yahweh. What's his secret name? Yahweh. Hey, Yahweh, the Pope is supposed to come here in September. Now, they come in here because they see he knows I'm here. He should come and see the one he's been preaching about. I'm the one. He knows I'm the one. Here's proof that the Pope knows the mother and the son is black. In, in Poland, in Poland, this exists. I, I believe that John Paul the second. Yeah, that's him. That's the one that's moving right now. <laughs> Black. They know that. 
Well, see, this got to go. This is this image right here? Now, that's, see, that's the wrong one. That's, that's, that's wrong. That's not right. That's, that's wrong. We got a picture of the Pope with the right one. We got the goods on it. You're going to have to bow to the right one, and I'm the one. Jose 4-6. You can't be healed unless you know the truth. And then after you know the truth, you have to accept the truth. You still can't be healed until you follow the truth. You got to know it, then you have to accept it, then you have to follow it. Then after you follow it, then you got to execute it. You want to stay here, you got to keep it. The way you got sick is you had the wrong knowledge. You had the knowledge of good and evil, but you practiced evil because the evil teacher had been in charge. And makes you full of disease. Jose 4, 6, read. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Now, that explains it all. Lack of knowledge is what destroys you. We've been a people sitting in darkness. Isaiah 9, 2. Isaiah chapter 9. Verse 2. All people of the earth have been walking in darkness. But my people, the so-called blacks of America, have been in the depths of darkness. And the lies we live in America proves that we have been in the depths of darkness. Not even a glimmer of light has existed for us. Verse 2 reads, The people that walk in darkness have seen a great light. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them hath the light shined. See, the uh, 23rd Psalm says that there's somebody walking in the shadow of death. And the only ones that fear no evil are those that know Yahweh is walking with them. But here is a land that is the shadow of death. You walk in the shadow of death every day of your life in America. You don't know, you could have been at the shopping center where that fool was just a couple of weeks ago. When police officers get shot down, people shopping in the center just get shot down. Shadow of death, you don't know when it will strike. You sleep at home, you go to work, somebody break in your house and kill your wife and rape her and rape your daughter. Cut their arms off, that happened too. They just turned one fool loose this past week. He raped a 15 year old girl and cut both arms off. Spent eight years in jail, then they turned them fool loose. He's not healed. He's a sane maniac. Raised up by American teachers. Fool without the knowledge of Yahweh. So what do you think, he's healed? Eight years in jail doesn't give you a new mind. If jail could give you a new mind, then everybody in America needs to go to jail. Come out new. Jail only makes your mind work. People have been walking in darkness, have now seen a great light. And who, I wonder who that great light is. I am that great light.
Where are these people? They're dwelling in a land where death stalks their every move. You have not been walking under the light of salvation, but you've been walking under the shadow, the very shadow of death. Good gracious, what a way to walk around. And these people are in darkness. Can, can you imagine walking in darkness and then be under a shadow <laughs> of death on top of it? Boy, that's double trouble, isn't it? <laughs> to be walking in darkness and then be under a shadow of death. Good gracious, what? Woo. You're talking about double indemnity. You, need, you don't need a light. Notice it took a special kind of light. Was it a great light? Ordinary lights can't reach these people. A regular man with a regular mind won't get it. And knowing what it took to reach you who sit here, I know my light had to be great. Now see, darkness and light is referring to your mind. I think it's about 2 Corinthians chapter 3, which show you that this is talking about your mind. This light and darkness is talking about mind power. What kind of knowledge? is in your head and what kind of understanding do you have and can you get without me? Please turn to side two. If your mind is blind, then your mind is in darkness. When your eyes are blind, that means no light comes into your brain. It does, light does not register. Imagine, see, when you have a blind eyes, your eyes are totally blind and no light enters into your head. You can't perceive images. Your perception is limited. How pitiful it is to have your whole mind blind. Now that is a difficult position for our people to be in, to sit around with their whole mind blinded. Let's look at verse, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 13. Let's see who that is first. Verse 13 reads, And not as Moses, which put a veil over his face, that the children of Israel could not steadfastly look to the end of that which is abolished. The subject is many here, many subjects here. First, something is going to be abolished. And what is it that is going to be abolished? And there is an end of something. And I wonder what the end is of that something and when is that end and how can we know that that end arrives? 
And then you see another subject is the children of Israel. And then we see that Moses is also a subject. Now, it's, it's clear that when you read the book, Moses brought the law to the children of Israel. That means they were without the law. So it was wrong. They were without what? The knowledge of the law of Yahweh. Israel, in the day of Moses, was without the knowledge of the law of Yahweh. Then Moses came with the law. He taught it to the children of Israel. But then Moses turned around and put a veil over his own face. See, he, Moses was taken up to a mountain. And he was able to look over into New Jerusalem and one country which was me. But he was not allowed to be here. He knew he was not going to be allowed to be here with me. So symbolically, Yahweh did not allow Moses to enter Jerusalem at that time physically as a sign of today that he would not be allowed to enter into this kingdom that I would come and build and establish which would last forever. Moses was not allowed to abolish immorality. Moses did not have the authority to set judgment in the earth. That was not his job. That job was reserved for Yahweh himself. So Moses came as a prototype came as an example of what you could look forward to in the future. So since Moses was not going to be allowed to be here this day, then he could not afford to teach this advanced knowledge. But since he was a faithful servant of mine, I let him look down and see me coming to this. years ago. He was not the one to, to abolish immorality. He was not the one to bring an end to immorality. So he was not the one to establish the kingdom of Yahweh. The one 1900 years ago that they claimed was Jesus. He was not allowed. So he too had to go up to a mountain. And when they went up to a mountain, the disciples, they saw him transfigured with Elijah and Moses and himself. They all were denied being here today because I reserved that for myself. I'm here. They were transfigured. They were allowed to look all over to today and see my coming. They could see the end and the abolishment of morality and the wicked ruler. So the one 1900 years ago had to be killed and cut off. Moses was not allowed to go physically into Jerusalem because he could not teach the people. Moses brought the name. He said, you send him to the Israel, but they're going to ask me, who Who's sending me? So Yahweh said, tell them I am that I am. Tell them the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Tell them the God of their forefathers who sent you, Moses. And that's what Moses did. He took the name to the people. And when you take the name, you got to take the knowledge of that name and take his law. So then Moses gave him the law. But then he had to put a veil over his face couldn't teach Israel all that was that they were to know. That was reserved for the one who right it in.
So we understand now, tonight, what happened to Moses and why. You can understand what happened to the one 1900 years ago and why. They were all placed on the mountain together, transfigured together. Some wanted to build three temples then. But see, they, he, the one night the ego said, no, there's no need to build three temples. There's one coming that'll be on the earth in 1987. He's going to build the temple that man can't destroy. He's going to build a temple without hands. He'll be working with tools in the quarry that the men can't hear the tools burning. He's going to carve a stone out of the mountain without hands. He's going to build a temple that man can't destroy ever again, that will live forever, because I'm going to build it in your mind. The enemy of Yahweh and your enemy took your holy land from you. They took your holy city, Jerusalem, from you. They took the knowledge of Yahweh from you. They took your history from you. Your, the knowledge of your history, the knowledge of your culture, the knowledge of your language, the knowledge of your land, the knowledge of your name, all of this was taken from you. They could take those things, but they can't take me. They can't take God from you. I am here. Now we're ready for verse 14. There are holy men all over the earth, they say. There are preachers, religion is all over the earth, but who? can explain verse 13 as I just did to you. They never have, or they would have, they would be producing my results. Verse 14, read. But their minds were blinded for until this day remaineth the same veil untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament, which veil is done away in Yahweh ben Yahweh. That makes me the Christ. Because you sure won't get your veil done away in no other. You can claim you believe in this all you want to. But that veil is still over your mind. This is a false image that does not get the veil done away. You've had this going for 1900 years and you were still blind. And nobody hollers Jesus louder than you. You've been a fool about that man. Still walking in darkness. Mind still blind. Pocket still empty. Still walking and living in poverty, and sickness and disease, and suffering and death. So it's not done away with this image. Until this day. What happened? Your minds were what? 
Black, can you imagine how pitiful it is to have your mind blind? And you walking around thinking you can see. And yet now, each of you know that you were blind. How many of you know that your mind were indeed blinded? And that you can read the Old Testament and don't know what you read. I'm proving it. You don't know what the New Testament reads either. You didn't know all this was in here. Go to church all your life. And when you read it, you don't know what you're reading. I say, explain it to me. You, you're him and how. You could never explain what I just showed you. Now you can play like you're smart. You can go impress somebody. Hey, brother, let me show you what this is. Put out your tablet. Hey, brother, check out 2 Corinthians 3, verse 13 and 14. What does that mean, bro? You can really come off intelligent now. Hey, bro, tell me what that means, man. You know your brother's ignorant like you because y'all went to the same school. Hanging on the same corner. Had the same teachers. You just got smart tonight. You left him on the corner so you know he don't know this. You can go back to mama. Hey, bro. Check this out. Run this down to me right here, bro. Tell me about sex with this, please. 13. You know bro can't tell you. Then you can really be smart. Hey, man, let me tell you what happened right here. See, uh, see Moses went up to the mountain. me and get some more. So you can play smart again. You got to come see me. Because I'm the source. I'm the only one that can remove that veil over your mind. This concludes part 14 of Preparing for Rulership.